Hello everybody, Mike with you here on the Sonex 413 YouTube channel and we're just getting into the third edition, our third episode of our build along video. We're building a sport free flight model, looks like this. We've been using foam plates and recycled kind of materials and whatnot. Um, if you just popped in here out of the blue, uh, you're probably going to want to check out the uh, first and second episodes or you could stick around and try to figure out what we're doing and for the other couple of you guys that made it this far through the first two videos and are actually building along with me here uh, we're gonna have something looks like an airplane here in this building session if you recall uh, in, in the previous episode we had wrapped up with getting our um, a fixture made and and gluing our wing halves together well I got mine unpinned from the building board after the glue dried up and man they are just beautiful nice and straight let me see if I can get behind the camera here give you a view of it look at that do you remember how we learned to eyeball the wings to look for twist those are nice and straight and not only that look at the beautiful little under camber we've got going on there 20 inch radius you can tell your buddies all right and there's those marks that means that's the front so I'm very happy with the way that wing turned out it's super light and then we also had cemented the tail boom stick into our fuselage blank and that's all set up and uh, again eyeballing it down the tail stick along this seam here uh, I can see it's perfectly straight so that's a, that's a success now if we put them together it's kind of chunky looking what the heck's going on well there's extra material when we we, we built that fixture to <clears throat> be able to set this radius and we left some extra material in that so we could pin it down to the board and make the assembly easy and uh, now we're going to remove some of that material prior to assembly and we're going to also remove some of the top of that fuselage blank there and bring the whole thing down a little so uh, we're not going to do that just at the moment <clears throat> We've, we're going to sidetrack for a minute cast your mind back to might have been the first uh, might have been the first episode we laminated some 132nd inch balsa wood sheets about the size of postage stamps together and we're making a switch plate so here's one of those laminated four layers thick of 132nd balsa and and like I told you if you don't have the balsa wood you could you could actually laminate layers of cereal box cardboard together and make something that would work fine so that's really light really stiff I'll tell you what you, you almost have to tie that down so it doesn't float away it's so light um, really rigid too and as I mentioned in the earlier video you can make bulkheads out of this ball supply and substitute it for heavier plywood on small models you know gas powered stuff <clears throat> so what I've done here I've taken and marked out, marked out a little rectangle it's the same dimensions as our little slide switch okay and we want to have a slide switch on the model so we can leave the motor switched off while we charge the capacitor and uh, and and walk out to the middle of the field throw the switch and, and release the model so these are really tiny and if you try to glue them right into the foam as I mentioned before if you try to operate it there's not enough gluing it gluing surface to uh, give it strength and when you try to operate it it'll tear it right out so we, we our balsa sheet um, switch plate here we've got it marked up with a rectangle size of the switch I've jumped ahead here's another one I made four layers thick and there's the um, hole for the switch try it out it goes right in there very nicely so we're gonna mix up a little batch of five minute epoxy there's our old buddy the hound of hell all right we're gonna mix up a little this is the DevCon five minute stuff I don't 
well, and back in the day I used to use different setting time epoxy. For these little planes I'm only ever mixing a drop at a time and I like the five minute. The trick is to try to just get the same size drop there. Alright, and then a little boss of scrap. We're only doing this one little job here, but if you have to mix enough epoxy to get a good thorough mix, good distribution of both the A and the B part in there. And in, in a small area like this, uh, you've got to really make sure it's mixed good because there's there's not much material there, not much epoxy there, and you've got to make sure you have both types distributed through the whole mix. Don't worry, there's plenty of time to mix it well. Okay, now I'm going to wipe off some of that material from the stick itself because that's where there might be some that hadn't been mixed together yet. And then I'll take from the pile over here that definitely is mixed up well. And I'm going to put some, maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. I'm going to coat the inside of that switch hole and try to just rub some of that resin right into the wood. You do want to be careful and not get a whole lot of it in there because um, you'll gum up your switch and you can ask Richie about that. He, he has sure done that. Glue the switch together right in the airplane and then uh, it wouldn't move. So of course you had to cut it out and uh, do it again. Alright, I'm going to set this down just for a second here. And there's the switch. And it's a good idea to just operate that one a couple of times before you glue it in because um, they're not the highest quality and uh, generally they work okay but you want to make sure you got one that has a good feel to it every once in a while you come across one that feels like it's jammed in there or something don't use one of those but uh, but they are only a couple of cents a piece now I'm going to take my epoxy here and just just a tiny wipe of it. I don't want any to get into the switch. I just want to prime that surface so that when I put it into the hole it'll have a little something to stick to. Alright, and then I'm going to come up from the bottom making sure I don't touch the side of the hole because I don't want to get in any in that slide mechanism. Coming up through there. And you could come in the other way too, whatever you think is going to work for you. And then what you want to do is end up with it being nice and flush like that. Any little excess, just wipe it there. And don't mess with it too much <laughs> because you, you'll do something to it. Alright, now on the back side I'm going to take just the tiniest little bit and just allow it to sit in the corner there. Now this has been a minute or so since I mixed it. It's already starting to slightly gel up. That's what I want because if it's too liquidy it can actually get down into the switch. I want it just at the consistency that it's at right now. That feels good. All right. Maybe you can see that, maybe you can't, but it's flush in the front. In the back, we've got access to those three pins. And after that sets up, we're going to take and trim this in closer. We didn't want to trim with that open hole because the wood will split. Now that the switch is epoxied in there, we can cut away that wood without so much danger of splitting. We'll trim away a little and then block sand it down, and that'll be our switch plate. Okay, um, we're going to set that aside and I think hide this epoxy mess here so we don't uh, put down a good wing panel into it or something. 
That's like on the cooking show. They just hand it off to somebody there off screen. Well, I don't have Richie here today. No, no helper. But we're going to forge onward here. We're, we're making for the summit. Now, there's our uh, fuselage. What we'd like to do here is take a, approximately this distance off the whole top of that thing. So here's how we'll do that. There's our straight edge. I'm just going to come in there to about just just over the stick. Now, you could spend a lot of time setting this up and everything, but really all we're trying to do is get a nice even slice off the top of that. So, holding the knife nice and vertical like always and not trying to go through too much depth with one cut. We're just going to try to make it through in about five or six passes here. A little deeper each time. Holding the knife nice and straight. Vertical. Standing up straight. Oh, that time we got through. Alright. See what we've got there. Foam actually goes all the way out to the back, but we took off a little bit of height. Good deal. All right. And the other thing we can notice here is uh, if we put the straight edge on the top of that, you can see that that tail is kicked up, kicked up quite a bit. Well, not quite a bit, several degrees. All right. And, that, and that's exactly what we want. Now our uh, wing, wing root rib is going to get trimmed down. The first thing we're going to do is trim it off with the exacto, even uh, flush with the uh, leading and trailing edges. Uh, exacto will work or if you have a the little exacto saw that's nice too. But the knife will work. But uh, I'll tell you, that is a handy tool, the little razor saw. Uh -huh. Make short work of that. I'm almost tempted to use it for this, too. Well, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it with the X-Acto, because not all you guys have that saw. So... I'm looking at a sixteenth of an inch here and a sixteenth of an inch right there. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. When you're building models, uh, you know, you can measure every little thing, but uh, it's good to learn to trust your eye, too. A little awkward to swing that line there with the wing in the way, but it can be done. Alright, we're going to basically remove that carefully with the uh, X-Acto knife. This is a little awkward. I, uh, I'm going to do this off camera, but you see the idea. I'm just going to take my time, draw the knife through across that line slowly. And I'm going to go halfway in from this side and halfway in from the other side. And we're doing okay. We're just going to keep going here. All right, welcome back. The, that's right where the camera ran out. I was taking the uh, extra piece of material off of the wing here. Let's see, came off like that. That's the piece I cut off. And I was just taking that off when the camera ran out. And I was talking about 
um, using your eyeball to measure some of those things. Let's see how close I was here, just for the heck of it. Two, 259. 268, nine thousandths. That's well within our working tolerances. That's that's less than ten thousandths of an inch. And then this is the piece that we cut off the top of that fuselage blank. Remember that? Let's see how close we were on that. 140, 147, 145. Two, two one thousandths of an inch. Less than the sheet of paper. So, I guess you can trust your eyeball. Alright, so there are there are our pieces and if we put them together trailing edge of the wing lines up with the back of the fuselage blank just like so line it up that looks a lot a lot nicer a lot trimmer we're going to take a cut off the bottom later but uh, right now um, the only thing we need to do is where we made that cut we're just going to just a couple couple passes with the sanding block just to make sure there's no fuzz sticking up. Nice. Okay. Once again, the little dots are going to the front. And and we're going to use the center line in that blank to line up with the center line of the wing. That's going to help us. And then what I've done here is put a little mark on the fuselage that's how far the glue has to go. You see that? That's how far we got to coat it with glue to do this glue joint. All right, let's get our old trusty tight bond yellow carpenter glue out. You could use epoxy, but it's a little heavier. I'd rather wait for this stuff to dry. It doesn't take too long, and it's a little lighter, and it's water soluble. It's, it's it's nice to clean up. We're just going to put a little bit on each surface here so they're both primed and they're going to stick to each other like glue, as they say. That needs a little more right there. I don't want to use too much, but I want to use enough, if you know what I mean. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Now, dots to the front. Trailing edge lined up with the back of the fuselage blank right on the center line. In the front, wing is on the center line. So what I will do there is take one, some dressmaker's pins that I like to use for this purpose. And we're just going to not go too crazy, but we're going to paint it in there. And then in the front, line it up with that seam. Same thing. Pin it in. And then before you go putting too many pins in there, you want to get an eyeball on it from the front. And you know that needs a little bit of tweaking. You get the front view. Let me show you in the camera here, if I can. All right, we're going to do the front view like that and make sure the the oh boy is hard to do through the camera. But we're going to get it so that the wing is the same angle up at, on each side. That looks pretty good right there. You could uh, you could also pin it on the table and measure the height of each tip, I suppose. I'm going to just eyeball it and when I'm happy with what I see, I'll add a couple more pins. And keep checking. Keep getting an eyeball on it. I'm going to grab one more pin here out of my common pin collection. Some of those have got to be 30, 40 years old. I keep buying them and throwing them in there. and I don't know which ones are old ones and which ones are new, but 
guaranteed some of those are about 30 years old or more. Alright, I'm eyeballing this airplane from the front. I'll give it a little tweak there. I like the way that looks. And I'm going to eyeball it from the back. Yeah, I like the way that looks. Everything's on the center line. Alright. No glue squeezing out anywhere. All oh, looks good. I'm going to go ahead and put that aside, let it dry, and uh, shut off the camera. When I come back, that glue will be set up. It doesn't take too long. And we will cut the tail boom to the correct length. We'll get our tail surfaces mounted up, and we'll put an engine mount on there. We're getting places, guys. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, I wanted to show you guys, in case you weren't too comfortable with eyeballing the wing assembly, here's how you could set it up and measure it, do it real accurately. I've got the airplane pinned down to the building board, and we're going to take, uh, if we had a builder's triangle, we would use it, but we're going to use our CD case, and just, let's see, go in here and check this. And get it set nice and straight. There it is. You can see we're right, right at 90 degrees there. And then we're just going to take our caliper. There's the height of the wing tip there. And we're within a sixteenth over here. So, That'll work. And the front view, of course, nice and straight. That's how it's supposed to look, okay? Fuselage vertical, wings going up at an equal angle, both sides. Now we'll let it dry. And I'll join you back here as soon as it sets up, and we'll get into that tail. All right, see ya. All right, how did your wing turn out? Mine's real nice, and that's... I got the straight pins out of it. And I think the pins weighed almost as much as the model. That's nice and light. Are you ready to put the tail group together? Grab that um, stabilizer and rudder that we made earlier. Um, we marked the stabilizer along the center line when we made it. If, uh, if, if you don't have marks on yours, figure out where the center is. And, there's marks on the template you could transfer. In the meantime, grab your measuring stick. We're going to go four and a half inches on the tail boom here. Plus or minus a little bit. This is not exactly critical. Plus or minus a sixteenth or an eighth wouldn't kill it. There's four and a half. We're going to mark it right there. Double check the dimension. You don't want to cut it wrong at this point. <clears throat> what do they say? Measure twice, cut once. I even say measure three times. Alright, there's my little block of wood. There's my mark. Oh, the deed is done now. No going back. Alright, four and a half inches tail boom. Now, Let's get our horizontal tail unit, our stabilizer, and I'm hoping you'll be able to see this. I've cut a little mask here out of some notebook paper, and I'm just going to put that, it's got a, we're going to be gluing this on to the bottom of this, um, bottom of this tail boom here, and uh, we'd like to rough up the surface a little bit, but not not uh, put scratches in it out here. This is actually pretty nice material and if you haven't hit it with sandpaper it uh, it takes a nice uniform uh, finish from that Sharpie pen. So uh, there's my 220. Not critical. Doesn't have to be 220. Could be anything. Alright, we've centered our slot so we can see our two marks. 
And now if we just wipe down that, we're going to get just a few scratches in the plastic right where the glue is going to go and nowhere else. In fact, I can even actually see that. Okay. <clears throat> Next up, let us see how far that tail goes up the fuselage stick and we're going to mark that right there because that's how far we're going to spread the glue we just put a little dot there glue to there alright and I've got a couple of straight pins ready to use here to hold it together here we go I'm going to put a little glue on each surface put it together, pin it up, and then do the usual eyeball inspection. See if it looks straight. That looks good. And, let's see. Not only would I like to be neat with this, but, um, any weight out at the end of the tail multiplies when you get up to the front. The tail is so long, when you put a little weight out there, it makes a big difference in the balance. So I'm just using the barest amount of glue that I can, which is a good idea for the whole airplane, really. that on. I'm going to do it from the top view so I can see those marks. And then the bottom of that stick isn't quite square but I'm going to hold this thing square. Put one pin right, make sure the center line is on the mark, put one pin right there, and then the front one is right under there. One more pin, we will have it. Alright, then I'm going to eyeball it from the back. It needs a little tweak. Now is the time. I bought it from the front. That's not too bad. Let me get behind the camera and show you. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah. That looks pretty good, huh? Okay. I'm going to let that set up for just a minute. And uh, we can prep our... And I want to put this someplace where it's not going to get destroyed. Right there is fine. Alright, well, I need it for a second first. The rudder is going to go right on the side of that stick right there. So that means we want to sand this lower corner just a bit. That is to say right here. I'm gonna hold my finger there so I'm only only gonna sand the an eighth of an inch or less. That looks pretty good. Yeah. This is actually going to touch the uh, the elevator, the stabilizer. This edge of it is, and this edge is touching the fuselage. Once again, we don't want to use too much glue.
That I think is the perfect amount. Let's see. That just goes in there. And I would just I would just babysit it for five minutes until you know it's nice and straight. Let me get behind the lens here and show you. Okay. She's leaning to the right a little bit. Straighten it out like that. So what I'll do is just babysit it for five minutes and the tight bond is quick enough that uh, if you do that, if you just keep going back and straightening it, after five minutes it'll stay where it is. And uh, I'll be back when that happens. And we'll go on from there. It's time to start making a motor mount as soon as we get this tail group aligned. So, make sure that stuff stays aligned until it sets up. And we'll be back in a minute. Well, it's the next morning, and that glue certainly is dried up. Uh, we've got a nice-looking aircraft there, nice-looking airframe. Uh, what we want to do, I got the, the straight pins out of it that we're holding the stabilizer, and I've had a chance to give it a good eyeball inspection from the front and rear, and it, everything looks well aligned. Uh, let me just, I'll give you a quick view of it. It's hard to see in the camera, but check it out that looks pretty good and the front view okay looks nice and that is pretty darn light I gotta say looks real good and we're gonna do some more stuff with this in a minute but I want to sidetrack us to our old friend the uh, switch plate <clears throat> a little busy work for us here you remember we epoxied it into that balsa wood laminate and it's it operates nicely we didn't we didn't stick it with the epoxy uh, what we're going to do is trim most of this wood away and we want to leave about only an eighth of an inch or so a little border a little frame around that uh, switch a couple ways we could do that one is the razor saw that's real sweet I'm holding it off the edge of that wood block so I don't bend the pins from here on in we have to be careful. Same thing with that airframe. It's it's so delicate now that we've got tail pieces glued on it and whatnot. It's uh, we've got to be careful with it. There it is. Look at that. You can see the different layers. That's some cool stuff. So uh, the other thing you could do there is sand or cut it with your exacto knife. Pretty close. Not too close. And don't try to get through all at once because uh, it'll tear out. All right, and then if you choose to do it that way, you want to get that edge nice and smooth. Get our sanding block with the little 240, and just we can take it down like that. Get it as close as we want to that switch. Sometimes you can leave a little more uh, depending on the design of the plane. You could you could make it a special shape if you wanted. But yeah, that's real nice. That actually looks better than the one we cut with the saw. I think I'll take and put, put a couple strokes of the sanding block on that one too. Oh yeah, now they both look good. And then, of course, same thing on, on this top and bottom here. 
remove some wood there. So that's something to do. Now back to our airframe. Man, I can't get over how light that is. That's pretty sweet. Flip it over. Get your measuring stick. Come back from that leading edge and make one little dot on the bottom of the wing. One inch and a quarter back and then this little dot out here. Just a spec. That's a reference point. Uh, it's, a, it's going to be our starting point for determining the balance of the aircraft and uh, I, that's, that's where we're going to start. If we put our thumb and finger there, we're going to make a little balance rig for this later, but um, or we don't even have to. I like using just a thumb and a finger. If I put put my thumb and finger at it under the wing right at that point and support it, it flip it falls off at the tail. So obviously we need a bunch of weight in the nose, which is uh, it's, that's fortunate because we're going to be putting a motor up there and whatnot. If if you have a, a if you have your motor and capacitor and everything already, uh, we're going to mock it up by mounting it up on there to achieve that balance point, and then we're going to do some initial test glides. If you don't have your equipment yet, you could attach a little uh, piece of scrap hardware, a little junk screw or something, uh, you know, up under here, and get it to balance at about that dot, and, and you could test glide your plane. Uh, if you have your motor and, and cap, we're going to dum dummy mount it up in there so we can try gliding it, see how it goes. The idea is we're going to um, find out where the balance point is the best, and then we're going to mount up everything that has to go in a certain spot, like the motor has to go where it's going because that that's where it has to be. Uh, the only thing that doesn't have to be in a particular spot is the capacitor, which is the heaviest part, of course. And once everything else is mounted on the airplane, the motor and the switch, and we figure out, you know, we'll probably put a little five-minute epoxy up under the chin there to uh, for durability. Uh, but uh, once once everything's mounted up, then we can put the capacitor on there, move it back and forth till it balances in the right spot and and then do a final glide check and if it if that's right, we'll chop the capacitor in and do the final wiring hookup. Now, some of you guys that are experienced builders just from what what I said and what you got in your hands here, um, you can take the ball and run with it and uh, you you'll have your model uh, the rest of you guys who are going to follow along here with me and, and build along, uh, we've got some more stuff to do then. So we've got our little one dot under there. You can put it on both sides if you want. But uh, just something inconspicuous. It's just a little reference point, And it's going to be there forever. So just a little dot. All right. Now, if you assuming, as I said, that you have your motor and cap already, we're going to uh, protect this so we don't destroy it uh, during our test glide phase. And what I'm going to do, let's see, oh here it is. I've got a little block of foam, scrap material from our build here. And I'm just going to put that onto the motor to protect the shaft. And then, let's see. I've got some clear tape here, and I'm just going to go around that a couple of times. I'm going to fold the last piece into a tab so I can get it off. All right, that way, if we hit the front of this, it's not going to do any damage. Uh, I think I mentioned in episode one how if you pop the front of these on the shaft, it'll blow the guts out the back, which uh, happened to Richie one time at, at the field. <laughs> he he was test gliding brand new plane and he didn't take a, enough uh, steps away from the jersey barrier. He test glided it and it just one in a million shot 
hit exactly on the motor shaft on the Jersey barrier on the side of the road hit it at an exact 90 degree just like a, a little prick punch with a hammer just boom and blew the guts right out the back before he even flew the plane good thing the motors are so cheap all right we've got our motor there protected we're going to take another little piece of tape and just we're going to align this so that the, the motor case is even with the nose of the airplane because that's about where it's going to end up. It's going to be up here a bit, but it's basically going to be even with the front of the airplane. So I've got another piece of tape here somewhere. And the, you, you definitely want to put, put the tape on there well enough because if you're going to test glide it, um, you don't want to bump that motor loose <laughs> and go pick up the model, come back in the house, and then look at it, and the motor's not there. So you're out to the field trying to find your motor. All right, we're going to put our thumb and finger there again, try to balance it. Still way ta tail heavy, right? All right, I got to make one more piece of tape here. That'll do. All right, that's going to go on there. Now, I cheated a little bit, and I, I marked where my cap has to go. I'm, I'm going to put this on the belly of the airplane with the uh, leads facing backwards so we don't damage them here in our test glide series. And I'm going to stick that right there. That's a good place to start about a quarter inch back from the uh, nose of the airplane from that uh, body block about three sixteenths back or something and try it and yeah that's exactly where it wants to balance it's, it's resting on my thumb and finger there and it's sitting with the fuselage nice and level if I move it it follows yeah so that's our initial test setup for glide testing uh, at this point you can uh, take it out give it a nice little toss uh, not super fast just like jogging speed and observe what it does uh, if it if it repeatedly goes up dips and then drops and regains speed or maybe it'll only have time to do one cycle like that uh, try moving the weight a little forward uh, and if it goes down too steeply try moving the weight back a little bit take take a little roll of scotch tape with you outdoors and experiment move that cap capacitor back and forth till you get the perfect glide where it just is very consistent slow it'll, of course it'll be going downward the whole time I mean it'll be losing altitude but in a nice gradual way and uh, and if that balance point that you find by your glide testing if it's different from this one just put another little dot there and uh, a little darker and and make note of where yours balance is right I actually did a little couple glide tests with this one already balanced at that point inch and a quarter back from the leading edge with the capacitor with the motor and uh, I'll tell you what, I think you guys are going to be very pleased with how this thing performs. So, uh, I think that's a really good spot to break this one off. I don't want this one to go over an hour like the first two episodes. Uh, so, we'll leave the rest of the uh, install work here for the uh, final episode, which I'll put together real quick for you guys. Uh, like I say, the experienced builders out there, take it, take the ball and run from here. You got it, you got it made, man. Just uh, have fun with it. I wish I had a scale to tell you what that might weigh. I don't know. It's pretty light, even with the equipment there. But uh, have fun with it, and uh, we'll be back to do the final equipment install with the next video. Thank you, everybody that's been sticking with this project. I know because uh, I've heard from a few of you that there's actually some of these under construction out there. I think that's really cool. And uh, 
I'm going to want to see pictures or videos of those things, you guys. Uh, I don't know how we're going to do it. We'll figure that out. You maybe I'll, I'll give you my email address or something. But uh, I'd love to see what you guys are coming up with. And we're going to talk about uh, the color scheme. In fact, that's another bit of homework. Let me see what I got left for time on this video. Oh, nothing. I got to sign off. All right. Catch you next time. We'll do equipment install and work with the color magic markers. Bye, everybody.